Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. If you've watched my YouTube, read my blog, you've heard me talking about WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. I love it. I love spreading the word about it because it's so cool. So I thought I would bring the PM for the actual product on the show, Craig Lowen. How are you, sir? Doing good. How are you? Living the dream. Living the dream. You know, I dig WSL. Uh, here I'm running uh, Ubuntu. I can actually go and run LSB release dash A. You can see I'm running an older version, Ubuntu 18.04. I never really upgraded. I can run HTOP. I got 24 processors, so I got the full power of my machine here, you know. It's really great, really great system, and I happen to be using uh, the Windows terminal. So, of course, I've got Ubuntu installed, but then I've also got Debian. So if I want, I can click and say, no, I got Debian, right? So I got Debian on the left, and I got Ubuntu on the right. It's wonderful. You know this because you're the product owner. And um, I can go to the Start menu here, and I can type in, you know, Ubuntu. I can run graphical apps. I can do all kinds of cool stuff. However, in the past, I have not been able to do any kind of Arduino, uh, USB devices, webcams. You know, I got stuff to do, man. <laughs> so the, the word on the street is that you have a way that I can do USB IoT type work with WSL, which seems like it's one of the final frontiers. Yes, exactly. Actually, we just added um, through support with a third party, you're able to use USB workflows directly in WSL. Um, so this was work done by the Visual Studio team. They had an intern whose name is there, Nelson Daniel Troncosco Alex, and he was able to contribute to a, an open source project called USB IPD Win. And that allows you to interact with USB devices uh, over uh, the IP protocol essentially, but directly into WSL. Um, hmm. And so all you have to do basically is install this project, install some dependencies, and then you are good to go to interact with USB devices. Okay, so you do need a little bit of an understanding of kind of like how USB works. And even though WSL has gone out of its way to make it be really, really integrated, like cleanly integrated, like if I go here and I say explorer.exe dot, it opens up Explorer and suddenly like I'm like looking at Explorer, right? That mm -hmm. is clean and hidden from me, but it's important to note that underneath there are IP addresses, there's the hypervisor, there's there's stuff that you've hidden, right? Yes. With this exactly. USB example, we do have to have a little understanding about what's happening to our computers, right? Right. And, and that's kind of the goal was to unblock this workflow for people um, by using some existing technology. As mm -hmm. we tackle, you know, in the future, we could improve on it by having better integrated USB support for WSL. But that okay. would be longer term. So there's an open source project called USB IPD. We'll talk about why it's called IPD. And that's over here. Um, and this is done by this gentleman, uh, Franz von Dorselaer. Uh, I'm sponsoring him on GitHub. Lovely fellow over in the Netherlands. Very kind, very patient. And what he's got here is Windows software for sharing locally connected USB devices to other machines, including Hyper-V guests and WSL2. So we've said before that that um, WSL is using Hyper-V, but it's not using Hyper-V. Can you explain that? <laughs> yeah. So... There's kind of two uh, optional, comp optional components that you have in when you like click the turn Windows features on or off dialog. You'll see Hyper-V, and then you'll also see Virtual Machine Platform. Essentially, Hyper-V is everything, and Virtual Machine Platform is a subset of Hyper-V features um, that allow you to do things like use the hypervisor on Windows, the Hyper-V hypervisor, to create virtual machines. Um, and so we depend just on the Virtual Machine Platform uh, optional component because we create virtual machines in the background to power WSL2. Right, and that's really important for people to know because that means that if you have Windows Home, you can still do WSL. You don't need the pro version. You're not gonna be running Hyper-V VMs, you know, you're just gonna be running WSL. So he can basically tunnel these USB devices to these, these guests where a guest could be Hyper-V, but in the context of what we're talking about is gonna be WSL2. And he's gonna tunnel it by taking the USB packets wrapping them in IP envelopes, sending them over the local network, never leaves your computer, and then unpacking it on the other side. It's amazing. It's a wormhole for USB into WSL, yeah? Exactly. Yep, that's exactly how it works. It's lovely. So let's try a theory. So there's this thing. Uh, I have these devices. This is called a Meadow. It's an, a micro uh, controller, not a microprocessor like a Raspberry Pi. These are very low-level 
little devices here. Very common kind of a thing. I've also got this um, uh, WIO terminal from Seed that is a little Arduino device. And oftentimes you'll plug these devices in and they'll show up as a COM port. And that's great, works just fine. But sometimes when you wanna flash their firmware, you'll have to do a bunch of crazy stuff. And there's like a thing called DFU util. And there's, uh, I wrote a whole blog post about how hard this is. This DFU util is a thing you have to download to flash the firmware on a certain flavor of STM32 devices that go into bootloader mode. So sometimes you plug the device in, it's a COM port. Sometimes you plug it in and it's an obscure, weird USB device. And it wants, and then you have to go and install custom WinUSB drivers and it's a whole thing. And it's very stressful. And often when following instructions like this, you're off into the uh, into the weeds. In fact, the folks over here at Wilderness Labs end up linking to my own blog post to explain how bad it is. What I want to do is I just want to follow the Linux instructions because I just want to flash this thing, right? So what I did is I installed this uh, this USB IPD inside of uh, Windows, installs a driver, and then I installed a couple things over on the Linux side. It took me maybe five minutes of going through the thing. And I figured, let's try to flash one of these devices like live and see yeah. if it works. Is that cool? Sounds awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to bring my device manager over here. So these are my devices. Now, I do have a couple of performance counters that are banged out because um, I haven't installed the right Intel chipsets, but worry not. Okay. Now, if I want to flash this device here, this, uh, this Meadow device, it says here to put the device into DFU mode. This is really common for these little devices. It says hold down the boot button and connect it with the micro USB cable. So I've got my device. It's got a boot button and I'm gonna push boot. I'm holding it with one hand and then I'm gonna plug it in with the other. Okay, it goes bup, bup, bup. Now, here I've got STM32 bootloader appearing here. And you notice it's banged out, right? So that means Windows has no drivers installed, correct? Yep. Okay. No one has any drivers installed, right? Not even like nobody, Linux, Windows. <laughs> I've, I've got right. nothing here. Okay. Right. It's ready to be flashed. Okay. So this means that I want raw access to that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I go over to Linux and I type in LS, what is it? LS? USB. USB. Yeah. I just got a couple of hubs. I don't have any devices. I just have some stubs, I guess, that Linux has, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if we go over here into Windows, we can run USB IPD WSL list. Let's try that. Okay. And that just listed out the devices attached to my machine. Uh, it's got my uh, the device I'm on right now, the ProFX, which is a, a microphone. Here's the bootloader. It's got my webcam and my other webcam and my other webcam and my other webcam <laughs> <laughs> and my UPS and all this other crap. Right? Okay. This is an ID, right? This 9 4, the bus ID. That's right. my, that's this thing here. That's this, this bootloader. How do I attach to that? Because these all say not attached right here. Right. Uh, it's as easy as just writing USB IPD space WSL. Okay. And then attach. Yeah, exactly like that. Attach. And... The bus ID is 9 4. Exactly. Okay, now I'm in Windows, though. I'm not in Ubuntu right now. I'm doing this in Windows, right? Yep. This is all in Windows land. Okay, so I type that. And now it's that's a Linux prompt. What's going on here? So we're actually doing some kind of cool magic behind the scenes to hook everything up. So okay. uh, in Linux world, you we need to basically identify, hey, there's a remote IP, like USB device over IP that we can interact with, mm -hmm. and we need to hook it up. And so you just need to put in a pseudo password to get the okay. relevant privileges. And then we do all that for you behind the scenes. So once you enter it and hit enter, um, okay. your device will be ready to interact with in Linux. So it's going to shell over to Linux, run IF config, get an IP address, and do some magic. So we're exactly. going to want to watch here, and we're going to want to watch here in the device manager. So I'm going to hit enter. And look at the device manager. It's gone from other devices. If I want to dig for it, though, I can go way down here and I can find a USB 
the IP shared device, 9-4. So it just got promoted. It's like they assigned a driver to it without asking. So now we'll go back and we'll say WSL list. Look at that. Look at that. It says attached. Let me go back here and zoom in a little bit. It says attached to Ubuntu. So it even knows the name of the distribution. Yep. Okay. Let's go back here. Do I just run LSUSB again? Yep. Ooh. Ta-da. All right. All right. Here and now we're cooking with gas. So now... <laughs> I plugged it in just like I'm running Linux on the metal right now. It's talking to DFU mode. I haven't installed any drivers. It just, it's ready to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's go to our wilderness labs thing here. I've already filled out. I've already followed the exact Linux rules as before. And then I'm going to run the meadow flash OS uh, feature here, which is, uh, you know, built in. This is, this is what they come with. And I'll just say Med Meadow is their command line because this is called a Meadow device. And Meadow can like look at the device info and look at the device name and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to say Meadow flash OS. Okay. This is a brand new one I just got in the mail. Okay. And saying something about please press reset button. Let's find out what it's going to do here. Let's see. Okay. Might take a try or two. These these little USB things are persnickety sometimes. Oh, press enter. Hmm. All right. Okay. Try it again. Is it uh? Did you hear any da -da -da? did it disconnect and reconnect? Yeah, it went da -da -da one time. We might have to reconnect it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plug it in. Try one more time. Maybe pseudo. I know what it is. It's pseudo. Oh, meadow flash you're right. OS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. it. Pseudo meadow flash OS. Pseudo make me a sandwich. <laughs> Oh, oh do which meadow, which meadow, and then pass pass it in. It might not be in pseudo's path. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Because it's in your Scott path, not root. Oh, look at that. There we go. Okay, now we know. Okay, so it says opening DFU capable USB device. So look at that right there. So it actually finds the device, knows what to do, and I'm following the same rules. So any STM32 type of a device, if you're used to doing, if you're a Windows user, you're used to fighting with WinUSB, fighting with DFU util, you can follow the Linux instructions. Now, remember, though, this is an interesting one. This device, okay, is currently not being thought about by Windows, it's being shared, it's being tunneled over that wormhole. And when it reboots though, as is common with a lot of these devices, these small microcontrollers, it's gonna turn into a COM port. So what's gonna happen on the right-hand side here is we're gonna see a COM port appear here, and this device will disappear. So it'll unplug itself and plug itself back in. And because COM ports are not a thing that are supported yet, correct? in WSL, That's then right. I will go back into Windows and I'll use the Visual Studio and I'll just write my code as before. There you go. It just said device flashed. Look, a COM port is appearing, USB serial device. And now you can see here, the Meadow Ubuntu side is like, nah, I can't find the COM port. But the cool part now is it says COM9. All righty. So now I can actually go into you know, Visual Studio I can open up my Meadow application. I'll actually show you what one of those looks like if you want to see. And uh, and actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do you, do you actually one better. Let's switch back to here, and we'll reboot this device completely and see it uh, it boot actually into an app that I prepared already for us. Oh, 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 what's happening? 
So this is booting up. I've got a yep. couple of these out here. I just got another one in the mail. <laughs> you start hey, your collection. Look at that. Hey! Huh? What is that? What is that little blue person? That is a new logo for the Windows subsystem for Linux available in the Microsoft Store. So you can actually go to the store, you can search up WSL, and you can download the same runtime. It's exactly the same product. Everything works exactly the same. It's just delivered via the store now instead of via Windows. So it means you'll get updates faster and easier. Very, very cool. So this right here, just to make sure that folks understand what we did, this is a Wilderness Labs microcontroller. It runs C Sharp, runs the .NET framework. I followed the Linux instructions to flash it. It is an STM DFU bootloader. We used the Linux instructions. We didn't have to mess with any Windows drivers at all. We did this with the uh, help of our friends who put together both Ben and Nelson and Franz USB IPD Win, which worked great. And then when following the instructions, I now have the, the choice, the choice to follow either the Windows instructions or the, uh, the Linux instructions. And that's pretty cool. This is going to open things up for a lot of folks that, uh, that want to do IoT work. And, you know, maybe COM ports in the future could be possible. And we could do even more cool scenarios with our devices. For sure. I'm super excited to see what people end up doing with it. So I'm always happy uh, to open up more avenues to play around with WSL. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And uh, if you have any questions, go into the comments here on YouTube and uh, follow Craig and friends on Twitter. Bye.